Hey everybody, welcome to the Rochester Press Box with the Duffy Brothers this week. Ryan Duffy, good to have you back. Great to be back. Thanks for having me. Uh, Pat Duffy, good to see you again, my friend. Great to see you guys. Who's ready for the Olympics? Come on, everybody. Oh, I can't wait to see there. Now that we know Team USA lost Kawhi Leonard, is going to get somebody else. What about Cooper Flag? Uh, I mean, he's, what, he's 12 years old. Not yet. Good <laughs> time, man. 17. 17, 12, what's the difference? Hey, listen, we want to win, don't we? Yes. And they have 17-year-olds playing in other countries, right? Yeah, teams that aren't going to win. Yeah, okay, your point. I got you. Uh, I wanted to think about this for a second. Dak Prescott's in this negotiation that's always public when it comes to the Cowboys and all the money that's going into the NFL. Ryan, your thoughts on this. Is Dak Prescott's contract, if he gets it, if it's significant, is this the end or are we already seeing the end of NFL quarterbacks getting paid? You made a good point that if he gets it, I don't even think that he's going to get it. If there's one owner in the league that's not going to pay big bucks for a quarterback who arguably, yes, has performed during the regular season but hasn't gotten them to the promised land, it's Jerry Jones. And not to mention, too, Trey Lance is on their roster right now. So you have a low, I'm sorry, you have a high draft pick on their roster that if Dak doesn't perform well, they can replace him in and see what he's got. I can't imagine that Jerry Jones is going to pay top dollar for Dak to be on the roster. Resetting the market or no? Uh, I mean, he's going to reset the... Look, here's the thing. I don't think Jones pays him, to Ryan's point, but not because you have Trey Lance sitting behind him. I just think that Jerry Jones is ready to blow this thing up and he's going to roll the dice one more season knowing everybody's under contract. I don't think he's the one that sets the market. I know there's this talk that there's going to be like this separate quarterback uh, salary cap. I don't think that's a possibility. I think that we're now looking at, until the end of time... Every new quarterback that comes up that's a top 10 quarterback is going to reset the market for quarterback prices. You can't control it. How can you? It's, it's bizarre to me, all of these different quarterbacks that are getting paid. You got Lawrence, you got Jackson, a lot of these guys, and some of them have not made the playoffs. If they've done, they've been sort of one and done. Then you got Burrow, went to a Super Bowl, didn't win that Super Bowl, but he got paid as well. And you got Goff in Detroit, who was, who basically revitalized that team. I mean, are we going to price out markets? Are we going to see a 57 $60 million quarterback on a roster somewhere? I think it's a matter of time. You know, like you can't afford not to as a general manager or as an owner. Like you have to pay big bucks. Quarterback is is the most important position in, in sports, mm -hmm. arguably. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I can't imagine that any... Uh, a coach or, or GM or, or owner of a team is going to be willing to not pay someone to put their team back X amount of years like we've seen for every team that has not put money into their quarterback. There's a couple of things you're not factoring in here. And I understand the sticker shock. I'm seeing like a 280, 290, $300 million quarterback is insane. One, the NFL salary cap is continuing to grow every single year. All they do is print money. It's the most profitable of the four major sports. Two, I know this is insane, but relative to other of the four major sports, NFL players are the lowest paid. You can pay it compared to what some of these mid-level bench players are getting in the NBA. Guaranteed, all guaranteed contracts. And that's the third point. NFL owners have a way out in these contracts if they want them with non-guaranteed money. We're going to see that in the contract that Tua Tunga Vailoa eventually signs, right? Like, yes, when you see the initial headline, look at it this way. Josh Allen signed a contract for, what, $230 million a couple of years ago, and people could not believe he was getting that money. Now, he's not even a top 10 paid NFL quarterback, and he is the best bargain contract-wise in the NFL. There are ways out. There's too much money to be made. Dak Prescott will not be eventually the highest paid quarterback in the NFL. It's so bizarre to me to see all these different quarterbacks. You know, you think about who's won Super Bowls over the last five years or so. We're talking one who's retired, Tom Brady. The other is Patrick Mahomes. And if you throw in a, a Matthew Stafford in there, who basically went on a great one with the uh, with the Rams that one year, the question is why, why those guys are taking. I think Brady took less money, and Mahomes to, you know, got an early deal in which it gets restructured to make him one of the highest quarterbacks. Look, there's an argument to be made, just like in hockey with the Maple Leafs uh, the last couple of years. You know, when you have three ten million dollar players, you can't win. You're right. Having an affordable quarterback makes it unbelievably easier to delegate your money in different ways. It's the argument people are making against the Bills right now. Unfortunately, unless you're a team like Houston or hopefully a team like Indianapolis in their case, right? Yeah. You have to pay that quarterback. So eventually everything will come back to the middle. I'm telling you, man, we have only begun to understand the insane economics of the modern NFL. Uh, yeah. Let me give you this scenario. Top-rated quarterback, young wide receivers, veteran wide receivers, rookie quarterback. What would you take? I would take the the rookie or second year quarterback because you're obviously paying them less money and you can invest around them with veteran players who are able to help elevate the play of that quarterback. You always take the quarterback. The quarterback is what matters the most. Name me the last second year a rookie quarterback to win a Super Bowl. 
Thank you. I mean, you you <laughs> you do not do it without a veteran quarterback. Veteran quarterback trumps everything else all the time, which again is why Brandon Bean is making the moves that he's made in the offseason. But it brings hope to the fan base for the following year. And that doesn't make any that's, sense. You, you can't put a price you, on you, hope. You are playing. You are playing. That is a great line. You you are definitely playing for the, uh, the for the fans to believe in the system, thinking we're one quarterback away or one talented offensive weapon away. Yeah, the Bills were one quarterback away seven times in their, what, 17-year playoff drive? Stupidest take I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, and your hair yeah, looks like yeah, a bird's nest. Yeah, leave the man alone. My goodness, I have to, have to be referee with you guys. All right, we've already gone over time. Bill segment coming up next. Lovely brothers are here. You're watching the Right to the Press Box. Just passing through life lessons from notable Rochesterians, people you may think you know. Don Elhart, Maggie Brooks, John Dady, and Stacey Pension, Jay Mack and Soccer Sam, Fred Costello, and Jake Zembeck, along with 21 more. How they all got from there to here. It's a new book by Bill Pucko, available for $12 postpaid only from rocksportsnow.com. Try it and thank you. Our NFL pick segment in the Rochester Press Box, brought to you by Connors and Ferris, your trusted and dedicated workers' comp attorneys and official sponsor of the Buffalo Bills. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Press Box, this section of the Press Box, the Bill segment being brought to you by Connors and Ferris, your workers' comp attorneys. All right. I didn't mean to anger you, but I found some bit of information that will anger you. According to the score, five NFL teams will uh, end their playoff drought. Five NFL teams will not be making the playoff picture. One of those teams packed up is the Buffalo Bills. It's not. Who are the teams that are going to replace the Bills? I don't think it's within the division. I mean, you have to consider here, right? What is, is it Miami? The New York Jets, according to the score, in your division, uh -huh. will make the playoffs. Okay. So this is complete BS. But how are they going to make it? They're going to beat the Bills for the division? The Dolphins are going to beat the Bills for the division? Because you can make the argument the Dolphins had a way more talented roster last season than they did. Uh, they have this upcoming season. They had a three-game lead with five weeks to go, and they couldn't close the deal. They had a head-up opportunity to win the division against the Bills last game of the season. They could not close the deal. I don't see it within the division who overtakes the Bills for that division championship. Excuse me one second. I just need to aggressively cancel my subscription to the score. <laughs> okay. What is the score, by the way? Is it the Canadian? I don't know if they're okay. Canadian or not. I think this they're Canadian. They, wrote. they I... sound Canadian. No, that, you're thinking of the score. <laughs> It was your idea to invite him on. Yeah, it was. Right. It was. And I, it was my idea to anger you both. All right. Obviously, this is going to be one of those situations where uh, everybody's like, well, the Bills, we, the wheels have to come off the Bills wagon eventually, Ryan. I they love can't this. possibly do that. I love this. We all know that the Bills thrive being an underdog. They thrive on Sean McDermott's mentality of, of fighting against, you know, all of the negative press. It's constant billboard material this offseason. I cannot wait to see the regular season play out with the Buffalo Bills being counted out the way that they've been in the entire offseason. It's so exciting. It takes the pressure off of the team. And arguably, the team didn't perform as high as expectations had been mm -hmm. when there was ex a, a, a lot of pressure on mm -hmm. them. So I like the fact that we're kind of resetting here a little bit and having everyone know throughout the course of the season that the Bills are the team to beat in the AFC East. Uh, your thoughts on wide receiver, uh, rookie wide receiver, I should say that, Keon Coleman basically saying, I'm not Gabe, I'm not Stefan, I'm Keon. Yeah, your thoughts right. coming into that. There's that much pressure. There's no more truer statement than I am not this person or this person, I am myself. And I think he needs to keep that in mind and Bills fans need to keep that in mind. Going further, there is so much undue pressure being put on this kid right now. Not only just to be Stephon Diggs, but to be a standout player opening day. If we look traditionally at the way that Sean McDermott and Brandon Bean handle their rookies, they bring them along slowly. And I understand that with Coleman, you're going to have to do it faster than normal. I don't think in the first five weeks people are going to be blown away by this guy. By design, the Bills are going to do what they can to bring him along softly, right? I mean, Ryan, we saw this last year with Dalton Kincaid. He was one of the best working tight ends in the NFL. He didn't really take off until week eight. And with Dalton Kincaid on the roster, too, I don't think Keon Coleman needs to be anyone other than Keon Coleman. You have Dalton Kincaid. Khalil, Khalil Shakir had a great end of the season. Once the ball stopped being forced to Stephon Diggs, there is a cast of, of supportive characters in the wide receiver and just pass-catching core to where Keon Coleman does not 
need to be Stefan Diggs or Gabe Davis. And arguably, I don't want him to be Stefan Diggs or Gabe Davis because they weren't showing up the way that we, they, we needed them to at the second half of last year. So I, I'm all for it. Bring yes. on, bring on our goose egg, Keon Coleman. I love it. <laughs> well, either way, you think about it from the Stefan Diggs numbers, not as great as previous years. And the same thing with Keith Davis, home run or strikeout. Right. It was one of those sort of things. You need some consistency on that front. Going about a week and a half away from camp opening up at St. John Fisher. Right That's around right. the corner. That's right, buddy. Uh, that is the Bill segment being brought to you by Connors and Ferris, your workers' comp attorneys. Like it or not, coming up next, you're watching the Rochester Press Box. Here's the Press Box trivia question brought to you by Market View Liquor, where exceptional customer service meets an extensive selection. Jefferson Road. Thank you, American architect Frank Lloyd Wright and this amazing getaway to Great Cliff. Hello again, Mike O'Brien, your getaway guy. I'll take you on the tour. Just look for the getaway guy right now on Facebook. Here's the Press Box Trivia Answer, brought to you by Market View Liquor, where exceptional customer service meets an extensive selection. Jefferson Road at 390. Welcome back to Like It or Not. This Like It or Not segment is being brought to you by Ralph Honda, where Honda is done right online or in their showroom. Build your new Honda, get financing, and a quote on your trade. For your next Honda, visit Ralph Honda. All right, Like It or Not, uh, Clay Thompson going from the Golden State Warriors to the Mavericks. I mean, what, 13 years in uh, in the Bay? I mean, uh, good for him. What are you doing to... in the Bay trying to sound cool? Hey, guys. He, play, hey. he played in San Francisco. You, go, you, you played for Golden State? It's you know, on the other yeah, side yeah, of Oakland? Oh, he's just hanging in the Bay. Are you familiar with geography? He's hanging in the Bay, man. <laughs> hey, he's catching these beach boys out, not in the Bay. He said no to the Lakers, but decided to go with the Mavericks. I, I like it. I, I think it's good for him. You know, obviously. The well, he wasn't Mavericks. hanging out in the L.A.? <laughs> Hanging out in the Dow now. You go see, baby. With, uh, with Mark Cuban. No one said dude. No one said dude. That, is that played out? It's played out, okay, right. I right. like it. I, it's good for him. It's a good change of pace. He said it for him. He said it himself. He like, feels more rejuvenated. Good for him for a change of scenery. And I think the Mavericks are a good team for him to land on. Four, four championships with Golden State. Could have taken the Lakers. I guess they offered him more money. His dad used to play there as a broadcaster there. Yep. But he goes with Kyrie and company. Yeah, I don't think this does anything for Dallas. I think if anything, it hurts Dallas. Like you said, he's been there for so long. He was a vital part of that offense in Golden State. He was Robin to Steph. Golden Batman. State, what is that, a state? Don't you mean California? Okay, California, wherever. It doesn't matter. The <laughs> bottom line is this. Now he's in Dallas. Look, I, I, You know better than anyone, Tariq. Every year there's two or three named veteran players that just fall off the face of the earth yep. when they sign for agent contracts. It's going to be Clay Thompson. It's over. It's over for the guy. It, it would have been interesting, too. Orlando, I guess, was in the mix. In the oh, you talking about the O. What? Never mind. No one calls it the O. Well, we do. Are you guys are from Orlando? The land? No, we, call it, we call it the magic. Okay. All right, yeah. That's, that is the team's name. At any rate, uh, Daily Hurley said no to the Lakers. And, of course, yes, the UConn. Similar numbers, off about $20 million, but he gets to stay home. Six years, $50 million. Yeah, I don't think he was ever seriously considering Los Angeles. You know how it is with these college coaches, especially when they get calls from their professionals, right? You dance with them a little bit. You let the ADs and the presidents of the college get a little bit worried. And then here comes the Brinks truck getting backed up for him. By the way, really smart move. When is the last time, with the exception of, oh, my God, am I, am I blanking Butler to Boston? And he didn't even win the championship. He oh, won it as an executive. Thank you, Brad Stevens. I mean... Name me a college coach that had success in the NBA in the last 25 years. Patino couldn't do it, right? Uh, Billy Donovan, he had minor success, but it, they, what, they went to a Western Conference final one time when he was with the Thunder. No, the smart thing to do is to stay at that school and just keep cashing checks over and over. Everybody seems to be running out of college because of this, I don't know, NIL deals, all these different changes. Danny Hurley seems to be thriving. I don't understand. I'll tell you why I love this the most. It's for the kids, right? <laughs> the kids who signed up to be a coach or to play at UConn because they love their head coach, they don't need to or go into the transfer portal anymore. Yeah. It's all about the children. If there's one thing that we need to think about more, it's the children. I'm it's, glad he's sticking around. It's a smart move. To, I, I, it sounds like one of those infomercials, but if you think about what he's trying to say, what is consistent? He could have taken the money, even though I think the Laker thing was a ploy. 
He didn't take the money, stayed there. Shows me he's loyal to at least New Jersey. Bro, New he's York. loyal to Green. That's what he's loyal to. And I don't blame the guy. If he was loyal, loyal to money, he would have taken the uh, $20 million extra dollars. See, here's what's the difference between you and me is. You ready what's for this? That? Smart or smarts you and, think, and handsomeness? You think, yes, I agree. You think micro. I'm thinking macro, man. Yeah, you can take a nice big fat contract that's guaranteed with LA, and then when you get fired in three years and they pay you out, now you're going to go be an assistant for somebody else. He's going to have that job at UConn for 25 years if he wants it. And every year that contract is going up. That is more money. More money is at UConn than there is ever in any NBA team. Can I throw out a theory, though? Can I throw out a theory that if the Knicks do not put this nucleus team together, that they would actually go over to Danny Hurley and try to pull him into the NBA? And here's the thing. If a couple of years from now things are not as rosy as they are at UConn as they were, yeah, maybe he takes a shot then. But again, find me a college basketball coach that has been successful in the NBA. It doesn't exist. No, no. Uh, that is, uh, like it or not, coming up next, Unfinished Business. You're watching the Artistic Press Box. The Press Box Stat of the Week is being brought to you by McArdle's Restaurant in Fairport. Come home to McArdle's. to the Rochester Press Box, Unfinished Business, and Pat Duffy fires off first. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for this? Somehow the first time, as far as we know, in Western New York history, there's going to be a Buffalo Bills fan convention. It's called MafiaCon. It is Sunday, July 20th at the Western New York Heroes Event Center in Buffalo. We got vendors, special alcohol, but here's the reason I'm sharing it with you. How would you like to hang out with one really handsome and one average-looking Duffy brother while they do their fantastic podcast, Let's Go Duffalo Live? We're going to be there at... MafiaCon, July 20th, the Western New York Heroes Event Center. Uh, our time slot will be starting at 4, going probably till around 5 o'clock. Be around like-minded Bills fans. And again, I'll say it. I don't know how this is the first time it's ever happened. We Bills fans travel unbelievable distances and congregate thousands of us all at the same time in other cities. And we've never gotten together for a party like this outside of the season. Be a part of the first one. We'll see you at MafiaCon, July 20th, Western New York Heroes Event Center in Buffalo. Come out and catch a live tape of your favorite Bills podcast. Let's go. Duffalo. Over the last few weeks, I've become involved with an exclusive social club made up of top-notch athletes, people of all age ranges, and a social community that is just so beyond accepting. Like the 4 million new members since 2022, I've become a pickleball guy. I held out as long as I possibly could. And you know me, I dance to the beat of my own drum and I answer to nobody except my wife. So you need to understand that if I'm out here stumping for this racket sport, you have to know that it's worth your time. Pickleball's popularity in the U.S. has skyrocketed in the last five years, and rightfully so. It's a great social experience with a passionate community, a great cardiovascular exercise, and an extremely low-cost entry barrier. For less than $10, you can find an entry set of paddles and balls to share with a friend and make your way out to the countless public parks who have invested in pickleball courts all over the greater Rochester area. And if you're looking for something more exclusive, there are dozens of indoor facilities in Monroe County that offer premium courts, instructors, and an endless number of people willing to offer you a match. If you haven't yet, there's no better time to give the fastest growing sport over the last four years a try. I cannot recommend it higher. Ah, uh, Hard Knocks. I love the show. So when Hard Knocks decided to do an offseason of my New York football giants, I couldn't wait. I watched the first two episodes, and I have to say I'm disappointed. Not in my Giants as an organization, just how the show is filmed. What makes Hard Knocks great is you get to find out who is going to join the team, try to make the roster, some third round, fourth round, sixth round player. You develop sort of a relationship with them. You root for them and you find out by the end of the season whether or not they're going to get cut. Basically, this episode of Hard Knocks, first two episodes, have focused on the Giants not even into the offseason yet. Yes, they're offseason because they didn't make the playoffs but not really into the regular offseason. I didn't see any draft stuff the first episode, saw it in the episode, second episode. I didn't see anything going on within the last couple of weeks at minicamp. All I saw was stuff that happened six months ago, for crying out loud, leading up to what will be the end of the offseason. If I want an offseason, I want to see something actually happening in that offseason about a week ago, two weeks ago, the way Hard Knocks used to cover the team. If you're going to cover an offseason, 
Give me more than what happened six months ago. Cover it straight from the end of the season to the draft to mini camps and show me some progress and not a quarterback getting over a knee injury that took place eight months ago. Thanks everybody for joining us here on the Rochester Press Box of Duffy Brothers Ryan, right around the corner of the week and a half away from camp. Can't wait. So excited. Best time of the year. And we're going to be following it on our podcast, Let's Not Go. Duffalo, on Instagram and on TikTok. And Mafia Con, I thought you had something like that for Buffalo. No, as far as I know, there's never been a Bills fan convention. So we'll see you there July 20th. We'll be taping the show live and you can catch it, get it on all of your podcast places. Uh, let's not, or let's go Duffalo is the name of the podcast. That's amazing. Thank you for re-recording this again because I screwed up before he did. So it's all good. You're watching the Rochester Press Box. Enjoy your weekend. He made fun of me. He should be the cheap podcast place. You could get it at the podcast place. <laughs>